The career of one of my favorite contemporary filmmakers virtually coincides with when Now Playing began. Director Paul Thomas Anderson's first feature film, Hard Eight, debuted at Sundance in 1996, but it didn't get a commercial release until 1997. We didn't review it on the show, but it made my top ten list. Anderson's There Will Be Blood is his towering achievement, but a filmography that includes Boogie Nights, Magnolia, and my 2002 top ten topper, Punch Drunk Love, reveals a small but astonishingly strong body of work. Because Hirokazu Koreeda's films have received limited runs in the United States, if they've even been distributed here at all, we've only reviewed two films from this Japanese director whose work I greatly admire and anticipate. My favorite is Afterlife, which finds the recently deceased characters faced with the task of choosing one memory to recreate on film and live with in this depiction of heaven. It's a quiet, contemplative gem. The films of Lars von Trier are about as far removed as you'll get from Coriata's, but the Danish provocateur is always worth keeping tabs on. In Dogville, he demonstrates to powerful effect what happens in a world where mercy and forgiveness are unknown and unvalued qualities. The Depression-era story starring Nicole Kidman is set on a stage with chalk outlines and minimal props. Like he always does, von Trier made a tough, uncompromising film with artistic daring. I'm quite fond of The Dark Knight and Inception, but director Christopher Nolan's best film failed to connect at the box office like those blockbusters. He makes his cinematic sleight of hand look effortless in The Prestige, a tale of dueling magicians. But it takes a lot of skill to create a puzzle film that also works as a deep exploration of the costs of dedicating oneself to a craft. It's a sly film whose greatness is best appreciated on multiple viewings. I'm always intrigued to see what prolific director Steven Soderbergh has in store. Within the past six months, he's released two pretty good films in Contagion and Haywire. I'd like to spotlight the film that gave him a career rebound in 1998. His Elmore Leonard adaptation, Out of Sight, stars George Clooney as a bank robber and Jennifer Lopez as the U.S. Marshal who's pursuing him. Whether the chase is out of professional duty or love is part of the fun of this funny crime picture. Richard Linklater's 1995 romance Before Sunrise encapsulated the starry-eyed 20s of an American and Parisian who met on a train going through Europe and decide to spend the day together wandering around Venice. Nine years later, he and stars Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy returned for Before Sunset, which captures the 30s when some disappointment has caught up with them. Over a period of years, Francois Truffaut followed Jean-Pierre Léo and Antoine Duanel from childhood to middle age. If only we can be so lucky that this director and his two collaborators revisit Jesse and Celine soon. Perhaps my favorite film released during the entire time we've been doing now playing is David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. Dream logic meets a nonlinear Hollywood mystery in this surreal masterpiece.